Hi, my name is Brian Sexy Legs Keen, and thank you for tuning in. Today I am going to read chapter one of my brand new book, With Teeth. This is on sale right now in paperback and of course for Kindle. You can get it on Amazon and from discerning booksellers. Uh, it's published via Death's Head Press. Here are the things you need to know about vampires. First of all, they don't dress in black. They're not high-cultured, well-mannered, nicely groomed, or perfectly fucking quaffed. Vampires don't form secret societies and war with other creatures of the night. They don't hang out in cemeteries and tombs, listening to Bauhaus and Typo Negative and smoking clove cigarettes and whining about how much eternal life sucks. Vampires don't have crises because vampires barely have any thoughts beyond what's for dinner. They don't feel love or angst. They're not romantic. Vampires are not sexy. They don't look like Bela Lugosi, Christopher Lee, or Stephen Moyer. They don't behave like Dracula, Lestat, or Edward Cullen. Vampires do not fucking sparkle. Forget everything you've seen in movies and on television and video games and everything you've read in books and comics. The vast majority of that stuff is bullshit. Vampires are more like sharks or rabid weasels than they are human beings. Now maybe you're laughing right now at the weasel comparison. If so, I reckon you've never seen what a weasel can do to a group of chickens. I see these hipster jackasses going on about free range chickens sometimes on social media and I just shake my head because it's clear to me that none of them have ever grown up on a farm or worked on one for any length of time. Free range farm animals end up as dinner for free range predators. A few years back, a weasel got into my chicken house. Now that was despite me taking measures to proof it against predators. I had chicken wire encircling the entire thing, both the shack they roosted inside at night and the pen that served as their open air enclosure during the day. I dug a good 12 inches into the dirt all around that chicken house, burying the wire fencing in the ground beneath it and then running it up over top the pen and the shack. That thing was like Fort Knox. The chickens were protected from hawks and eagles up above and foxes, rats, and weasels from below. Or so I thought. One night, a weasel dug its way down underneath the pen and then chewed through the wire itself and managed to wriggle up inside the enclosure. The next morning, I was sitting out on the porch, drinking my coffee, scrolling through Facebook on my phone, and it occurred to me, I didn't hear the chickens. Usually that time of morning, they'd be clucking and walking around, catching bugs and worms and basking in the early sunlight. Instead, there was just silence. I walked out to the pen and found out why. Every single one of my chickens had been slaughtered. The weasel had torn off each of their heads one by one and drank their blood. See, that's all a weasel cares about. He doesn't care about the meat or the fat or the innards. He just wants that warm blood. And when he'd had his fill of blood, the weasel left behind 14 decapitated hens and two headless roosters. There were feathers strewn all about, but very little blood. The weasel had done a good job of getting all that, like a drunk at the bar chugging beer directly from the tap. And that's why I don't have chickens anymore and why the coop is sitting empty on my property with weeds growing inside of it and a roof that's starting to sag. The chicken massacre traumatized my daughter, Alicia. I'd warned her again and again about getting attached to farm animals, but to be honest, I'd grown pretty attached to those chickens too. It was probably a year before either one of us could eat chicken again. And in truth, she was able to do that long before I was. For a while, every time I tried to prepare chicken for lunch or dinner, all I saw were those headless bodies lying strewn about their pen, yellow curds of fat bubbling out of the bloodless, gaping neck stumps. Alicia is supposed to go off to college this September. She wants to study biometrics at West Virginia University up in Morgantown. She's a lot smarter than I am. She gets that from her mother, Karen. She looks more and more like her with each passing year, too. Karen died of cancer when Alicia was 12. We celebrated Christmas together in hospice that year, and she was gone before New Year's Eve. It's just been me and Alicia ever since, and I'm damn proud of her. Even though I don't exactly understand what biometrics is or what she wants to be when she graduates, she says that with biometrics, she can get a job with the FBI. And looking back now, that's funny. 
Not funny in a Larry the Cable Guy stand-up comedy sort of way, but funny as in ironic. You see, it almost came to pass that I would have paid for my daughter's college tuition by cooking meth. But then the vampires happened, and in the space of one single night, everything changed, just like with the weasel. Like I said before, just forget everything you think you know about vampires. They aren't any of those things, particularly when they're hungry. Hungry vampires are the worst of the bunch. They are vicious and mean. We're gonna pause because the boat, probably not as loud on the video as it is here. So where'd we leave off? Oh, we left off with hungry vampires. He is very loud, though. <laughs> Go on, move! <laughs> vicious and mean, I believe, is where you were at. Vicious and mean. You're vicious and mean, San Giovanni. You know it. <laughs> they are vicious and mean. They're dirtier than pigs, they live and breed in filth, and they reek worse than roadkill. They're pale, hairless, scrawny fucking things but also incredibly strong and unbelievably fast. It's been my experience that they don't go to art galleries or split the atom. But that doesn't mean they aren't smart. On the contrary, vampires are wily and cunning, especially when they're hungry. Ain't nothing more deadly than a hungry vampire. Anyway, this happened just a few nights ago. Settle in for a spell and I'll tell you all about it. Thank you, I hope you enjoyed that sneak peek of With Teeth and uh, we now return you to our host, Sadie Hartman, I suppose.